Welcome to Ask an FAE. My name is William Mack, and with me is Sam Mercado, a Kemet Field Application Engineer. Today we're going to be talking about a customer issue while measuring the output voltage of a filter design. So what exactly happened? So our customer um, basically was, uh, as you mentioned, they had a filter design that they were working on, and uh, they put an in-volt peak-to-peak voltage into uh, their circuit, and what they noticed is, is that the output voltage was going up uh, from around 70,000 kilohertz up to about 100,000 kilohertz. So what they did was they took the common mode choke out of the circuit and they did the same measurements on the inductor alone or on mm -hmm. the choke alone. And what they found is that it was still having the same effect. And so their concern is that this uh, incident wasn't following uh, what was supposed to, what they know is supposed to happen in the data sheet according to the data sheet and what they know is supposed to happen with uh, chokes. So uh, they came to us asking if we could help them figure it out. And we got a number of people involved, such as um, our product manager for chokes. Uh, he gave them a few suggestions. So um, we weren't able to find a solution. So hopefully today we're able to do so. OK, so what they were seeing was a voltage increase while frequency was increasing? Yes. Uh, so from around up to about 70 thousand kilohertz the voltage was staying the same and then once they got to around 70 kilohertz up to about 100 130 maybe uh, kilohertz uh, the voltage would increase and then from there it would fall and, and that's actually not supposed to be the case and this was increasing past the input yes. supply right yes so we're seeing yes. a voltage amplification with a choke exactly okay so that shouldn't be possible um, exactly do you know how they were testing it when we talked to them, they basically said that they were uh, hooking it up to probes, uh, sending a signal through it, and I think it was 9 volts peak to peak. Um, and basically what they saw is that uh, the voltage went up to around 35 volts uh, as the uh, frequency increased. We gave them suggestions, basically asking them if, um, if they had it hooked up right. We sent them a picture of what it should be hooked mm -hmm. up, uh, where the probe should be, uh, to make sure that they were correctly measuring it. Um, and, of course, that didn't work. So Okay, so we're actually going to try to tackle this ourselves and recreate what they saw in our lab at the Kemet Application Intelligence Center. In front of us is the SS30R180190. The common mode choke that the customer used in their testing. The choke was tested on its own by shorting the two coils together so that both coils see the same common signal going through them. One end will be connected to the signal generator. And the other end will be connected to the oscilloscope. The signal generator is set to a three volt peak to peak output and we'll start at one kilohertz and ramp our way up from there. And as we're ramping up, we start to see the peak to peak voltage go up slightly. And now it's really starting to pick up right at around 200 kilohertz. And then we start to see it dip back down. So what is going on at this 200 kilohertz range for it to increase it beyond its input voltage of 3 volts? There is definitely something wrong with this test setup as we should not be able to see a voltage higher than this. First, let's check if we are getting the right reading from our waveform generator. Let's remove the choke and connect directly to the output of our waveform generator. we can see the waveform generator is outputting the correct voltage into our probe. But yet, when we connect the probe back to the common mode choke, we see a big increase in the voltage. I'm starting to suspect this probe could be the culprit. Let's take a closer look at this probe. We can see it has extra capacitance and resistance. This is enough to cause reflections onto our signal due to an impedance mismatch. 
To ensure the probe no longer has an effect on the circuit, we'll use a coaxial cable instead. First, let's make a loop back to the signal generator and make sure we see a 3 volt sine wave. We adjust the voltage scale, and we can see approximately 3 volts on our coaxial cable. So let's go back to our SS30B common mode choke and see what happens now. We can see something less than 3 volts, which is a good start, but let's sweep our frequency from 100 hertz. Everything's still looking good, but now the voltage is increasing again to levels even higher than before at 16.9 volts. What is going on now? Well, the input impedance is set to 1 mega ohm, and it's large enough to still cause reflections back onto the circuit. Let's set this input to a 50 ohm impedance. Now we see nothing at all, but let's check our waveform generator settings, and let's lower this frequency to 100 hertz. And we're going to have to adjust our time scale now we can see our waveform take shape. We can see that our peak to peak measurement is 1.48 volts approximately, but that doesn't match the amplitude peak to peak that we're expecting from a waveform generator. And that's because our generator is expecting our load to be a high impedance. So we'll have to change this to 50 ohms also. Now we can see that they match. So let's start with sweeping the frequency. We can see that the frequency never exceeds 1.5 volts coming out of the choke. And it's attenuating the signal with increasing frequency. We see the maximum attenuation at around 300 kilohertz. If we take a look at the impedance versus frequency plot from the SS30V common mode choke, we can see that this frequency is the peak impedance that this choke produces. So this matches with what we see from the oscilloscope where we saw maximum attenuation at around 300 kilohertz. So as you can see, this is something that you could easily miss when testing. So uh, we're here to present you with just one case that improper testing can easily lead up to very wrong results. Um, and this just isn't the case with common mode chokes. It's the same case with inductors. It's the same thing with capacitors. Uh, we see that uh, using the improper measurement techniques uh, can and will lead to uh, false results or results that you weren't supposed to have. Yeah, it's very important to have expectations of what your results are going to be because if they don't come out right, then you have an idea of maybe what to look for. And usually the first thing to check is your test setup. So, so uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, please feel free to access any of our social media accounts uh, and make a comment or post um, or just tag Kimmit Ask FAE and we will get back to you as soon as possible with an answer. Yep. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Stay curious.